Welcome back. You're watching Global Today here on Morning Prime, holding court with Professor Peter Kagwanja, who is uh, the CEO of Africa Policy Institute. Also, I've greeted first time with Farah Malim, the member of parliament for the Davos, for member of a speaker uh, panel at the National Assembly. Also, we do have with us Dr. Ken Obongi, who is a historian at the University of Nairobi. Also, Mashara Munene, who is a historian as well. Now, the story that uh, I just primed you on before we took a short break, uh, this is regarding the recent development as far as the recalling of Dr. Peter Maduki is concerned as the East Africa Secretary General, where we have a Ugandan lawyer who has filed a case at the East African Court of Justice to contest President William Ruto's decision to recall Peter Maduki, the outgoing East African Community Secretary General, and nominating him for a state job. Maduki, who until his recent nomination by Ruto as Kenyan ambassador to Moscow, was serving as EAC's sixth Secretary General and this time was to end in April 2026. The lawyer, Mabirizi Kiwanuka, noted that Kenya's move to replace Maduki with another appointee was not only questionable, but also unlawful. In a detailed plea to the court, Kiwanuki sought a permanent injunction to be imposed on Kenya, restraining President William Ruto's government from nominating another Kenyan national to fill Maduki's position. And one now to join Mr. Kiwanuki online just to also prime us on this as well with uh, with the, the petition that he has filed with the east african uh, court of justice right now to seek the an intervention on this latest development so far as has he or that is president ruto contravened the treaty of for the establishment of east african community good morning uh, kiwanoka and thank you for joining us here on uh, morning prime yes uh, it's good to be with ktn yes my first time uh -huh. Yes. All right. Thank you. Just a primers I'm on the, the latest. Yes. How is Kampala yes. today? Kampala is fair. The morning is cool. You, you, you look like you're in yes. the jungle there. Sometimes are you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the leafy so suburbs. Yeah, but it's still, it's still so early. It's still so early. Anyway, as, uh, uh, yes. As you have said. Yes. Um, Monday, Monday. On Monday, I found the uh, reference number 14. Of 2024 in the South Carolina Court of Justice. Yes. My point, my point is very simple. That the Secretary General to the East African community is not an ambassador to be recalled by a partner state. Under Article 67 of the treaty, Secretary General is the chief executive of the community and is not an appointee of a partner state. The article says. The partner state president shall nominate a person which person shall be appointed by the summit. That's Article 67. Now, the appointing authority is the summit, not a president. Moreover, Article 67, sub Article 4 says that a secretary general shall serve for a fixed term of five years. Yes. The term is clear a fixed term of five years. Mm -hmm. So, what uh, the Kenyan president is doing. Is turning the East African job of Secretary General to be an ambassador job, where someone is just recalled and reshuffled, which is of course contradictory, and it has far-reaching impacts. First of all, the framers of the community wanted to set up a, a strong community with a strong staff who are not uh, dancing on the politicians. That's why. They don't even provide in the treaty his removal. They say he shall have a fixed term of five years. Now, when you introduce something which Kenya is introducing, that when some people talk, or when you talk with another president, and you come and say, now I've removed you, then you are killing the community, you are subjecting the secretariat to the political whims of the partner states, and turning that professional job into an ambassador job. You cannot say, I'm withdrawing a secretary general. I'm taking him to another country. I, I, I don't think it applies anywhere. It doesn't, I don't think it applies in ECOWAS. I don't think it applies in European Union or any other regional bloc. Even African Union. Once a person is appointed by the African Union as uh, the head, I hear uh, uh, Babala Yudinga these days wants to, to head the African Union. Yes. But uh, a country cannot recall him. <laughs> yes. Just imagine, Laila <laughs> has become the head of African Union. And the Kenyan president comes who does not want him and says, African Union, I'm now taking him to Russia. How will that be? Uh -huh. 
So I think we have a duty as East African people to, 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 to guard the professionalism of the servants at the community. So that they don't dance on the twins of politicians. That, essentially, that's the, the refer, that's the petition. That you don't wake up and say, I'm reshuffling. You know, he's not a political appointee. He's not a, 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 an ambassador. Mm. Yes, because sometimes the secretariat may face a situation, for example, where Kenya wants something at the community. Yes. And they have a secretary general. Now, if he's transferable, you are telling him to act in the interest of Kenya. Yet, by the fact that he's appointed by the summit, he's supposed to work in the interest of the entire community. Yes. Yes. All, all right. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, because this is doggedly following... Uh, the recent uh, cloud banks of allegations of corruption that uh, Dr. Mavuki has been enrolled in. And uh, we have uh, Pandit saying that he had sought ma maybe refuge from the president to try and help him uh, in this particular, you know, tangled web or that he has been caught up with. And that's why he got the appointment in Russia as a, you know, a, as a landing as a landing pad, soft landing pad for him, as it were. So uh, are you in any way also acting maybe in um, in consent with the, some the legislators who maybe they've uh, advised you to file this particular petition so that he is not recalled is coming back and he will be impeached because there is an impending impeachment that was uh, uh, was being actually steamrolled by the east african legislative assembly first of all no amount of propaganda or talk and allow partner state to contravene the treaty you see, you don't speak a lot of things and then say, I'm contravening the treaty because someone said so and so. First of all, if they are accountability issues, there is a procedure how to handle them under the staff money of the Marisol of the East African community. Mm -hmm. We have they have audits. They have auditors. Secondly, it's like a general is not a minister to be impeached. It's like uh, going to parliament to impeach uh, a permanent secretary in a ministry. <laughs> you get the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pick a political point, a political person. <laughs> you get the point. So, the, the members of Yala are in the habit of contravening the treaty many times. And the corner found them so uh, when they removed their own speaker, Margaret Nanton Kozua. There are many other decisions where the Yala members they come, they gang up, they breach the treaty. So, the members of Yala cannot claim that we are, we are impeaching the Secretary General. The article 67 says the Secretary General is appointed by the summit and has served his term of five years. Five years, yes. There's no such possibility as a duty for impeachment. That's propaganda to scare him and probably to force our, our, our Kenyan president. But I'm, I'm afraid, can I butt in? Because yes. if there is any case of impropriety along the way, even if you have a fixed tenure of five years, and uh, perhaps I think there should be somewhere in the treaty that uh, if he's caught to be incompetent, uh, there's a, a gross violation of the treaty. If perhaps also he's taken ill, that uh, he's not of sober mind, that will give a spawning ground and a, an opportunity for impeachment as well. So we can say that five years it has to be a, an unclad tenure that you have to fulfill it. Anything can happen in between. That is your wish, but that's not the treaty. <laughs> the, the treaty, if, if any, in, in, in any case, under the administrative law and public law, the person who has powers to appoint is the person with powers to discipline. So if you are saying that the Supreme General is acting in discipline, then the summit, the matter should go to the summit, not Iyala. The president should sit and listen to the court is not Iyala. So if those allegations were to be presented, the Kenyan president would present it to each federal president when they meet, and then they, they, they discuss the matter. But not Yala members coming, maybe they have their own fight somewhere, you know, politician. They can have fight somewhere, and then they, they say now we want to impeach. There's nothing, there's no procedure for impeachment of a public servant. Because the Secretary General is the head of public servants at the East African community. So you, don't, you cannot say that I'm impeaching a public servant. If a public servant sells money, there's a procedure for handling a public servant. But you cannot turn uh, East African public servants into political appointees to dance on the wings of politicians. Then the technical wing will die out and we shall no longer have a community. We shall go back to a mean time when it collapsed. Yes. All right, finally, uh, and you'll hang on so that uh, we uh, have my panelists with me here that uh, also will chime in on this. So you listen in and also you can actually also bat in, ask questions as well or contribute as we continue. But I wanted to ask, so now we have 
Dr. Peter Mathuki exiting, going to Moscow, and we have Caroline who is coming in as an appointee of a president. So are you taking it as a Kenyan affair uh, of running of, East, of the East Africa Legislative Assembly? You know, one of Kenyan going out as Secretary General, and then we have appoint, uh, the president really appointing another one to take over that particular position. This is what you have scruples with. Of course, um, the, point is, the point here is that Kenya, what Kenya is trying to do is to say that it's finishing its term. You get the point? Kenya is saying that it has a five-year term, so in the middle it can keep on switching members. So, and I think the council of the committee will advise the summit that this is not possible. And for me it doesn't matter because I'm seeing there's also a political a, a, a dimension in this. Because you see, Masuki was nominated by, by, by the past president, which was predecessor, that is Uhuru Kenyatta. Now, the president which is being said is that when a new president comes in, whether in Uganda or elsewhere, he will have to replace the secretary general at the community. At some point, give, no matter the reasons. We don't know where the MP started the, uh, the, the argument. So my point is, that is illegal. That's illegal under the, under the community. You All don't right. keep switching public servants suit your political desires at a time right thank you Kiwanuka, just hang on uh, i want just to also uh, uh in involve peter kagwanja professor peter kagwanja is uh, the ceo of africa policy institute and uh, professor peter kagwanja you had actually tweeted uh, regarding this particular latest development and i read your twitter handle here uh, it says definitely we're not serious in slaying the beast of corruption instead of pushing dr peter maduri uh, maduki i should say and others who seriously hurt our image diplomacy and prestige with evident corruption we reward them with the prime diplomatic appointments to american asian and uh, european it goes on to say uh, let me just try and see if we can uh, get the full and uh, european capitals shame on us you want to respond to that? <clears throat> yes. Let, let me say that last week, um, I talked about, we were talking about the deployment, quote-unquote, of Raira Odinga after the handshake to Addis uh, Ababa, or the, 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 uh, the seeming deployment, because that's what it means. And it, it seems in the minds of Kenyans that this, this is cast in concrete, that uh, Raira is going to the African Union. That's, that's the kind of mindset we have set. Mm -hmm. Our conclusion last week was that you know, Kenya is exporting its bad manners, our bad political manners into the regional space. Mm -hmm. And the Maduki case is another illustration of one misreading the international, the regional space. It's a very disciplined, very procedural, and very well, you know, uh, protected by law that was enacted by the best brains on the continent, the best brain we have in the Eastern African region. And now we bring our own mediocrity as Kenyans to lead this space as an extension of our own, uh, you know, local politics. Mm -hmm. And that is going very badly. And it is really hurting us. And I was listening to one of the IARA members of parliament from a neighbor, from a region of countries. Mm -hmm. and, and I was torn between, you know, sh you know kind of sh shutting off that speech mm -hmm. or listening. But I had to listen painfully because it was indictment on us as Kenyans. And mm -hmm. the, his conclusion was, what happened to Kenya? Kenya has these major brains, very great minds, that can uh, do this work. At what point did we get the Madhukis and others of this world into this space? They were embarrassing the country. In fact, they were crying out for us. The, the point, well, I was one, I, I trained, I was one of those who trained uh, Peter Maduki mm -hmm. before he went. Uh, so I, 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 mean, I still have that under COVID. It was a very painful time that we, we have to Before you took up life. this particular appointment? Yes, 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 yes. Within the framework of the Foreign Service Academy. Mm -hmm. I, tra I was one of those who were invited to train. And the reason why we set up the Foreign Service Academy is so that we prepare our, lead, our experts mm -hmm. to, to, who are serving the region, who are serving our country abroad, to at least know what it is that they are supposed to do. And in this particular case, uh, Maduki is caught with his pants down in regard to corruption. Because if you cannot explain where six, uh, six billion, uh, I mean six million six US million dollars, dollars yes. uh, went, if you cannot explain and you are the accounting officer, then there's a problem. Now, with that then, what we are saying is that uh, 
on top of that, Kenya misinterprets, and this is what the Ugandan lawyer is saying, mm. you misinterpret what is happening. Madhuki was, is not a Kenyan ambassador to the East African community. Mm -hmm. Madhuki is not a, you know, a, an appointee of either uh, the Kenya Kwanza to Iara or whoever who can be recalled. Mm -hmm. Madhuki is a civil servant, just like Mudaura before him, and, and others we have appointed, who, have, who we have nominated. Mm -hmm. But after nominating them, it is not incumbent upon us <coughs> to decide what happens to them or what doesn't happen to them. Mm -hmm. Because they are guided by a completely different jurisdiction, which we are part of, the East African community and its treaty. So he's a subject of the treaty of the East African community, not by the Kenyan law. Mm -hmm. So if he has to be tried or investigated as corrupt, it's not according to the Kenyan law, it is according to the East African treaty. And, and in this case, we, 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 in a very confused and very embarrassing manner, we now recall him. You cannot recall him. You, will, you cannot recall him. He has signed a contract of five years fixed term. Yes. Just like Raida is seeking to, to sign a contract of five, four years mm -hmm. with the African Union. And you can just, just get these repos and echoes of confusion in our own un understanding of regional behavior. When you hear that uh, Raida says, I'm going for a sabbatical to the African Union, you're not going for a sabbatical. You are signing a four-year <laughs> a four year fixed term, okay. which you must finish by 2029. Uh -huh. So the Maduki case has echoes in our own confusion, the, the new mediocrity in our foreign affairs, and the embarrassment in our diplomacy, which is really causing tiffs mm. with all our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And when Kagame says, I endorse Raira, you can see, I wish you well. Mm. It is a tongue in the cheek, you, you can say. And, and here in Kenya, in our own newfound confusion, we celebrate, oh, Kagame has endorsed Raira. Kagame has no power. He has only one vote mm -hmm. out of 55 votes. And the East African, if East Af in East Africa, we mess up. But, he, he, okay, yeah. We'll if we, if we'll the East Africa, we, me we, we mess up. I know we are going to come. If we mess up, we will not be judged by a Kenyan court. We will mm -hmm. be judged by the, the African uh, Union uh, uh, protocol. Okay. All right, thank uh, you. The, in this particular case, it's the East African Treaty. So we are confusing things. We are muddling things up. All right. Have we exacerbated the situation by appointing Caroline also to swap or take over where Maduki uh, was holding that particular you know, position? Uh, so this is uh, also the sort of uh, the big brother syndrome that our brothers within the East African community are having scruples with or taking special umbrage? Uh, that's fairly obvious, uh, Diba, that, that um, we have this habit of making a bad situation worse. Uh, and uh, the Ugandan lawyer, Mbirisi Kiwanika, is saying, please follow the law, Kenyans, because he knows at the back of his mind uh, that uh, we aren't very good in following the law even in our own internal uh, affairs. Because uh, ever so often, uh, political expediency uh, carries the day uh, comparatively to, to the law in many political decisions that, uh, uh, that, that we make. Uh, but there is an additional dimension, uh, Prof, uh, which we need to add. Uh, besides exporting our bad political habits, uh, th there is also, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, undertones in what um, uh, our friends in the region are saying uh, that Kenya is also exporting its acquisitive tendencies uh, to, to regional politics. Uh, acquisitive. Uh, acquisitive. You, you know, mm -hmm. the ability to acquire things yeah, yeah, okay. uh, that don't Opposition. belong to us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, allowed, grabbing. allowed grabbing a, a, a <laughs> tendencies. Uh, tendencies. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's sanitizing uh, it. Yeah. Huh? So uh, they they're, they're pushing uh, the boundaries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so that's what they are telling us. Uh, uh, please stop on your tracks and uh, uh, think of the region. Uh, away from your, your style of uh, doing things, because part of the Kenya phobia that you find in Tanzania, in Uganda, uh, which is now extending to Rwanda, uh, is actually based on this uh, uh, ability to acquire anything and everything.
you, you had our president actually hinting at it when he was in Rwanda. Uh, and when he jokingly said, Kenyans have come here uh, with a language of 50 by 100 uh, in terms of land. Um, I don't know whether you saw that. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think uh, this is something that we need to, uh, uh, to deal with. Uh, uh, and and uh, uh, at least be in a position to respect uh, the, the laws that are put in place, uh, ESC as a legal uh, block. Uh, otherwise, um, we, we will be laying the ground for the collapse of, of this community, which has its own challenges uh, when you look at it critically. Right. Okay. Uh, I wonder, he's still hanging on, so since he's a... Uh, he's, uh he is our guest as well. We need just to um, drop him in. I, I wonder if you have any question for him, Farah Malim, uh, and uh, also Professor uh, Mashara Munene. We have uh, Kiwanuka still hanging on the line, so you, maybe you could have, be having questions that uh, we want to engage no, with. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. I think he's uh, basically he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a lawyer and he knows what he's doing. And, 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 and he has a very powerful point. But he, uh, I think it would be nice to also to respond to that particular acquisitive uh, tendency that... Uh, no, no, that, that, the one is, yeah. that one is... Uh, I mean, that fear is there in the whole region, if not in the whole continent, I must say. I think the only country that, uh, that shares that... Uh, uh, no, I don't know Nigeria. It's a bit too far away from us. We, we, we hear a lot of things about it. Uh, the few who have come in here... Um, not a good story to talk about, uh, but uh, but uh, Kenya scares the hell out of the countries in the region because uh, th there's a fundamental difference. There's a fundamental historical difference between Kenya and the other countries in the East African community, particularly the old East African community, Tanzania and Uganda. Those were protectorates. Mm -hmm. We were a colony. We were colonized. We were taught how to work very hard for the master. Literally, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and, and because, so when we got independence, <laughs> our desire to accumulate wealth, our desire to work very hard and be rich uh, because of colonization itself, mm -hmm. is, is, it was, was much more pronounced and, and, and profound than, than it was in the other areas. I mean, Ugandans did not lose their land to white settlers. They had their lands. I mean, they're still one of the most fertile countries in, in, in the world. Tanzanians did not lose their, 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 their big, big tracts of land to white colonial settlers. I mean, there were a few, I remember. I, I used to travel way back in the, in the, in the early 70s to go and meet my, go to visit my uncle who was in Arusha and, and travel quite extensively within Tanzania itself. Uh, there were a few pockets, but, but nothing like what we had here ourselves. And the relationship between the white colonials who were there those days and the Africans, the natives, was different from what we had here. Uh, so, so because of that, and then the other part of this country that is equally uh, extremely hardworking is, is the is arid and semi-arid areas. I mean, where we are, we are, we are, we are victims of the vagaries of the weather on, 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 on a permanent basis. So you have wealth and you lose wealth and everything else. So when we go to places outside, if you go right now to South Africa and you're a Kikuyu or Somali, you're still going to be seen as a threat by the people out there because you see money where other people can't see money. Or a kissy for that matter, you know what I mean. And, and these days, everybody, even the Lewis and the Luyas, are, 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 are doing so well. And people who traditionally, their land was not taken by the settlers. I mean, you didn't have to lose a lot of land in, in Western Kenya. Oh, the, the Cabirondo, what was called in the olden days, the Cabirondo uh, yeah. Gulf, and, and the West, Western Kenya and Nyanza were called the Cabirondo together. But we go to the Kikuis, where they, as far back as uh, 100 years ago, they could barely get an acre or half an acre to Eka living out of. And, 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 and in our case, we, 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 it, was, it was not easy. So when we go to other parts of the world, we tend to be more aggressive than anybody else. Uh, so so we, for other Africans to feel a little bit uh, threatened by our own aggressive ways of trying to do acquisition of wealth, or wealth accumulation, is, 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 is understandable. But there's one other thing that we do have. We're also one of the most corrupt countries in the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and corruption seems to be the problem here, for and, and, and yeah. not, But you see, corruption, corruption is rife where there is a lot of activity. Where there's no activity, there's no corruption. <laughs> you know what I mean? For, for you to be corrupt, there has to be, you know, exchanges. There has to be a lot of activity. And, and, and somebody wants to take an undue advantage of that. 
And, and, and so th those are the kind of things. I mean, you couldn't have so much corruption in, in Southern Africa uh, because they, they had everything they wanted. I mean, the land is just too big. People are, people, uh, for lack of a better word, they're just not in condition to working as hard as you're working. But if you take Kenyans now to Zambia and tell them to go and farm in that place, for God's sake, they were there. We will do a fantastic job there. All right. All right. He, he's been hanging on for a while so that uh, we can release him as well. Uh, uh, Kiwanuka, I just wanted to, you to respond, first of all, to the issues that are being put forward here. First of all, what is the perception of Kenya within the East African community? Do you, do you see Kenya, as is being put here, uh, running roughshod, especially on the affairs of East Africa? That uh, we have the Big Brother <coughs> Syndrome, and uh, they say that also the East African community members are greatly shy of Kenya. Uh, because uh, you fear the aggressiveness or the aggression that we seem to posture. Uh, do you hold with that particular view, as is being put by our panelist here, uh, Farah Malim, uh, who is a member of Parliament of uh, Dadaab and also a member of a speaker's panel, also with a professor, uh, with Dr. Keno Mbongi, who is a historian at the uh, University of Nairobi. What are your sentiments, briefly? Let, let me start with the MP. I don't think, uh, I don't know other countries, but we as in Uganda, personally, I don't feel threatened by any other country coming in. Uh, that people want to accumulate wealth, what I, what, but I, I don't think it's a threat because when foreigners come in the country, they contribute something to military development. And I think it's paratial, it is a cake to say, but now this person has come here, is doing this and this. After all, it's a free market economy, at least all over now, East Africa, some few countries, which are limited to the transactions. But um, what I don't agree with him is saying that uh, corruption happens where there are transactions. Corruption can happen anywhere. <laughs> in, in developed countries, there they are, uh, they are more transactions than African countries. But the corruption levels are low because it's being fought. So some politicians in the region here want to justify corruption as a means of uh, 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 quickening economic development, which I don't agree with. Now, back to the point which I put us here. Uh, I agree with the professor that actually the treaty was um, um, contravened. But what I do not agree with uh, the first and second panelists is condemning Masuki as a person who is ashamed Kenya or any other country without hearing from him. You see, that's the biggest problem. The right for hearing must be respected. As a, for a person, an MP is not actually empowered to discipline a public servant to come on the floor and say, this man is a thief. He got six million from somewhere and he spent it without our authority. That, that does, that's not enough to say that Masuki is a thief. Of course, first of all, uh, those uh, partners contribute. Uh, then other money is got from donors. So I think we should go to the point, did he steal the money or not? But that can, the, the year has no capacity to do that investigation to the completion. And that's why even the removal based on those rumors is questionable. Because you must as much as possible ensure that people are heard before a decision is, is reached against them. This starts from, there's a, there's a decision where they say that uh, fair hearing is as, is as Allah's creation, that even before God condemned Adam and Eve, he first gave them a fair hearing, that what happened. Then he punished them. So I think as a community, we must understand that actually fair hearing must come and then we should avoid political expedience over the law. Then, because when you, when you bring political expedience over the law, then everything is going to go a mess. Then I think of a big brother symptom. I think that was cured by the treaty. You see, what led to the collapse of the first community, of course, uh, one of the points I talked about the history we have been having. Uh, Kenya thought it was a big brother then. Tanzania thought it is big enough under Nyerere with uh, his Ujama. When Amin came, he also thought that he, that he can survive as a dictator. So everything went. And under this treaty, they are saying all countries are equal. And they have been caused by Burundi that for them they should pay little contribution because they're a small country. And members have refused. Because the moment you start saying this person should pay bigger, depending on the economy, then you are going to create that big brother thing that we are the big brothers here. But now since you are paying the same thing, you should all comply. So I, of course, I heard my point that uh, this thing is unconstitutional, uh, sorry, is, is corrupting this treaty. Uh, as the professor has said, Mathuki is a public servant. <laughs> Mathuki is not a minister, he's not an ambassador. Is a public, I think I, I like the example he has given of uh, Babalai Rodinga, that when he went to African Union, it was a fixed term. You don't see him recalling him. So I, I'm hopeful that the, the, the court will look into this matter 
as soon as possible. Of course, it takes time to look into it because of the backlog there and the judges are ad hoc. They just fly in every quarter to hear the case. But at least we shall have it solved. Like like other matters have been solved. Like remember there was a case of, of, of the, the method of election of MPs to Yala from Kenya, I think was filed by Professor Nyang Nyong. Many other cases have come up. And even Yala has been, uh, 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 I mean, put in the line by the court. So I thank you so much for hosting me at KTN TV. Hope we shall discuss more next time. Sir, oh, okay, there is a question uh, from uh, one of uh, my panelists here, Dr. Ken Ombongi. Then we hear also from uh, uh, Professor Mashara Munena before you, I let you go, uh, if you may indulge me. Uh, Buona lawyer, Kiwanuka. Okay. Right, so you can pose yeah, a question. Th thank you. Uh, uh, Kiwanuka, thank you very much for those uh, thoughts. Uh, maybe you might want to enlighten us on uh, uh, what are the forces behind your actions? Uh, are you just being a custodian <laughs> of uh, the law? Uh, or you are just a good lawyer uh, who has the interests of the East African community at heart? Uh, uh, Professor, if I may ask you, um, of course I'm a civic active citizen. <laughs> what I do is to be a custodian of rule of law and ensure that rule of law is adhered to, not only in my country, but also in the region. Because you know everything that happens to one of these countries affects all of us. So that's, but uh, basically that is it. I don't have any foreign force, I don't have any what, because we, if, when you have foreign forces, I afford this to my Ugandan counterparts, you lose the independence. You fail to select what to challenge and what to challenge. You, you don't, I will say, I don't want that, I want this. I don't want that. And the cases of Uganda are very partisan. Like in Uganda, you challenge uh, the agreement to move by himself, you challenge everything he does. Donors cannot give you much. So uh, the forces are, are behind me are the Ugandans and others who fundraise the money. We just raise this money. And this African work has become cheaper these days because of the, of the online thing. We appear online. So at least you can cut the expense of flying there. So, Professor, I'm, I'm a common Ugandan. You can also fundraise in the future when we get in the church. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Prof uh, Professor Mashara, is it just a moment to we'll give Professor Mashara as well so that uh, he can also uh, chime in and ask uh, a question if he has. Yeah, no, uh, uh, thanks a lot. I think I commend the lawyer for being a good citizen of East Africa. Yes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> trying to make sure that <laughs> procedures are properly followed. Eh? Yes. <clears throat> and the danger that he raised, the um, possibility of each country reorganizing the community to its wishes based on the domestic issues. Eh? The fact that uh, the president of Kenya can say, get out of here and go there, mm -hmm. and ignoring the, <laughs> the structure, I think that's one thing he's raising that uh, uh, is very important, and it's, for that he's commended for that. Mm. Which brings up the question of uh, exactly why was this necessary? I know he was uh, the president was appointing ambassadors and high commissioners, and there are, um, I think, three criteria for being appointed uh, an ambassador or high commissioner. One, it's merit because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that the particular the people in the in the system. Eh? Two, it's because you are crony or a friend, and it's got nothing to do with merit. It's just that you are a friend. It's cronism. Oh. Cronism, yeah, it's cronism. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes we call that it's politics, but it's cronism. Three, it's punishment. And uh, we've seen in this country people being promoted to be ambassadors and high commissioners so that they can get out of a particular position which is good to trouble. So I wonder in the case of Mabuki, was he being punished? Or was he given a, 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 or was learning, he be, a soft learning or, card? Or was he being rewarded for something? Mm -hmm. yeah? So if it is reward for something, then we wonder what that something is and uh, whether he himself asked to be rewarded uh, to go to Moscow. And, all right. Effectively, we, we don't have our president does not have a direct, mm. direct. Uh, so, uh, yeah, because if he was a chair, it's an overreach. It, yeah, it's, it's an overreach from the president. Yeah. And you yep. wonder why? And you want to but I haven't, I haven't read the, the, the protocols very well. Maybe we need to read the, the, the treaty itself. The treaty itself so well, so that you understand exactly. We, we might be doing some of these things out of 
uh, ignorance. Yeah? Yeah. But, 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 the, but the thing I, I, I like about the lawyer very much is that he says, look, you don't have to condemn anybody. Yeah, yeah. He, there's a presumption of innocence until yeah. proven guilty, until proven guilty. Which, which is very good. And uh, typical of us in, in Kenya, the moment there's a bit of a condemnation of somebody, even before that person has been given a fair hearing, mm -hmm. we, we jump to the conclusion that this person is corrupt. Yeah? Uh, and, and I think maybe what they are, what they are, uh, from 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 what I'm trying to decipher and gather is the issues that they 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 are trying to uh, uh, hold uh, Maduki to account is 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 uh, is like what you have in all countries. For example, right now, if you don't have parliament to approve a spending, uh, sometimes the government of the day will be will 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 be closed, will be shut down. In the US, they call it shut down if Congress does not approve uh, spendings. So most likely, I think uh, it, it has a bit to do with some of that kind of thing that were not approved by the, by the, by the, by the East African, by IALA, the Legislative Assembly. And, but, but because the, the institution does not have to, 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 to close or shut down, there the are times that uh, the, 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 the people in the administration, the executive of the moment, will do certain, certain actions to keep the thing going. The, issue, the problem is that which is a bigger ill. For example, if parliament is, 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 not in, is not in session, we don't approve certain spendings. But the government will, might, might do a but bit of an operation. The government is still spending. But the yeah? question is... It's uh, still spending. So but the, the big... The big the yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but you see the approval itself, with that. we had that, that provision also in, in our, our system, in which the government can proceed and spend without approval, but then we get it in retrospect. We, 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 we validate it later on, because the government can't stop. You see, when you say government shut down, you're talking about the police, the military, the everything. I mean, it's, it's, it's ridiculous a bit. All right. Yeah. I need to release uh... Kiwanuka, unless you have a question for, for him, Professor? No. Yeah. All about. right. Uh... To, make, to make a quick point on, yeah. on, on authority on the scene. Oh, oh, which, uh, which, which, can I release you yeah, then? That's, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Kiwanuka, I wanted just to release you. Maybe your closing remarks. I can see the prayers, uh, that, uh, the prayers that you have from uh, the petition, first of all. Uh, let me try and just and retrieve it uh, so that you can just prime us uh, uh, moving on. You've indicated that this is uh, out of good spirit of uh, being an East African, that we should follow the due process of uh, the treaty and the order that uh, is there with, from the treaty for the East African, uh, East African community. I want just to read a bit of it that uh, some of the prayers that you're seeking so far uh, here from your petition that you are seeking relief uh, first of all, make a declaration that the 8th of February 2024 action and decision of President of the Republic of Kenya to replace Secretary General uh, East African Community Dr. Peter Mathuki before expiry of his fixed year term, any appointment of successor that may arise from such assumption of the office and carrying out of any activities or work in that office on the strength of such replacement is unlawful and or in contravention of Article 6D, 7 sub article uh, 2 and 67 sub article 4 of the treaty for establishment of east african community and also issue an order annulling the 8th of february 2024 action and decision of president of the republic of kenya to replace secretary general east african community dr peter mathuki before expiry of his fixed five-year term any appointment of successor that may arise from such assumption of office and carrying out any activities or work in that office on the strength of such replacement and uh, issue a permanent injunction restraining the government of Kenya from furtherance uh, with implementation of the 8th February 2024 action and decision of President of the Republic of Kenya to replace Secretary General East African Community Dr. Peter Mathuki before expiry of his fixed five-year term. So it appears that uh, if this really sells through then uh, Peter Mathuki will still be the Secretary General of the East African Community and therefore, the impending or the looming impeachment will take effect. What is your assessment before you go briefly? I don't want you to... Of course, first, of all, first of all, briefly, yeah, my, uh, I, I refer you to Article 67, one of the treaty, to make it clear that uh, Basuk is not an appointee of a Kenyan president. He's a nominee. So that nominee is confirmed by the summit. It means, therefore, that removing him may require a summit to sit, and then the summit will have to be guided. But I think uh, as of now, as a Secretary General, uh, of course, the summit has to sit when it sits, and maybe it also uh, 
joins the breach of the law, then we shall see what happens. Uh, but more importantly, that um, because you cannot wake up one morning and say, I'm taking you to Russia, leave this African community. As someone has just said that uh, Mafiku was rewarded to go to Russia. I don't think this is a reward. This is a, this is a demotion, even if he has the powers to appoint. This is a demotion. Secretary of the African community is a very important office. It's, so, it's not a political office dancing on the whims. It's approved by five, now I think seven countries. Mm -hmm. An ambassador is appointed by one person. Go there, I can recall you. So this is a demotion, but of course a demotion which is unlawful. I have, talk on, I have, I have not talked to Dr. Peter Mafika. I don't know his point, whether he, will, he intends to contest, whether he intends to go to Russia. But what I'm, I'm saying that I don't think uh, this lady, Caroline, I think that's the name, will, will, walk, to, will walk to Arusha to sit in office <laughs> before the summit sits. And I don't think that the summit, if it sits and it considers the laws applicable, will actually allow Kenya to switch. So region, even before investigations, because if you are claiming that uh, Peter Mafuki has spent six million without authority, and now and you and, and you suspect that he hates some money. So should the community money be lost by Mafuki going to Russia? Don't you think that Mafuki should stay around until the summit investigates the allegations? I think the allegations are, 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 they need to be investigated properly. If Mafuki has a point, we should deal with him when he's still in East Africa. So do you want us to get him from Moscow and arrest him in case he hit our money? So all these things need to be put into the perspective. But anyway, it was a good uh, interacting with you. Have a good day. Thank you, KTN TV. All right, Bufana Malim, we wanted to ask him yes, something. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, it seems that he won't let you off the hook no, I'm yet. I'm not letting you off the hook. I don't know if you're <laughs> hearing me. Yes, he can hear you. But, 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 but let me tell you one thing. I'm beginning to... to Bufana, I think your, yeah. your mic, is it okay? It went off a bit. Just a moment uh, uh, so that I can see. Yes, uh, as I try and replace Farah Malim's mic uh, just briefly. Uh, but what, you, what is your question? My, my question is this. By the way, let me tell you one thing. Uh, anybody can serve in an office and then while still in that office, take an appointment in another office. I mean, th that, is, that is a personal right of anybody. You can be a minister in the government today or you can even be the president and you decide uh, I'm going to resign as a president and I'll run for the Secretary General of the United Nations. You, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's a choice everybody has. Uh, and then uh, the, uh, it's possible that our president has nominated somebody as a nominee pending the approval or ratification of that nominee by the summit. <coughs> Excuse me. Because the existing person is a Kenyan. So, so no, hang on, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I mean, I mean I'm just trying to understand these things and process very well because I wasn't privy to most of the issues that were there. So, so I, I, I tend to think, yes, you, he cannot be appointed, but if he has been nominated, then of course, even the suit itself is, 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 is ultra wise because our president cannot appoint him, but he can nominate him, being the town of Kenyans, for the summit to ratify that. But the question no, no, is... Hang on a minute, hang on a minute. And I'm, I've still not read the treaty to understand exactly how the transition would, continue, would go. That on the issue of whether Maduki can go and take up an assignment elsewhere, he has an absolute right to take an assignment anywhere. But the issue also comes in that does he have a matter to answer based on exactly what where he's, the manner in which he ran the office himself. That matter is open. I mean, there are no state, statute of limitations on something like that. He can be brought again and taken to court, and, 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 or even taken to the parliamentary, the, the bodies that are there, the different committees that are there. And if he has made a mistake, they can surcharge him. There, there are a lot of things that, that can be done by East African, IALA itself, to, to make sure that uh, they, 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 they are proper watchdogs and are doing the right scrutiny to make sure that Maduki was doing his, his work well. But to, to the extent which Maduki has been appointed somewhere else, he has taken an assignment somewhere else, and intends to leave that place and go else, elsewhere, he has a right to do that. And, and right. our president cannot appoint somebody, I but he can have a nomination. He can have a nominee who will then be pending All right. the ratification by the summit itself, which will, in their own goodwill and wisdom, might accept and say this is the Kenyan turn so they can have okay. All right. You're confusing us. I'm not confusing. But let's see. I, 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 yeah, let's hear from Matthew. Look, it was, it was a question. That is, that, does it in any way take I, the thunder away from your, your petition? That is, I don't agree. So you don't agree, okay? Because the Twitter says under Article 67.4, that the Secretary General shall serve a, a fixed five-year term. So a country which is nominated, the Secretary General, cannot purport to nominate another one. 
before it's part of that term. That is the illegal to which is there. You nominate a person for a fixed period. You don't nominate another one during that same period. And he's not tendered his no, resignation no, no, no. as yet. It, it is, if somebody can be indisposed, there can be death, there can be sickness, <laughs> that office can fall vacant one way or the other. Uh, hang on a minute. That's a hang on a minute. Oh, okay. That office can fall vacant one way or the other. The deputy cannot automatically assume the role of that. He can only be there on an active basis. Or, but, Hang on a minute. But, but he can only be there. I'm talking about statecraft and how these things work. Yeah. He can only be there on an active basis pending ratification. Now, whether within the, 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 the treaty itself, we still as Kenyans have a right to nominate somebody and get the summit to, to, to approve him or disapprove that person, he or she, is, is another matter that one needs to read the, the protocols. But, but then, but, but then the, 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 the choice of Matuke to leave okay. that office and go to another place is a constitutional right. Nobody can take uh, it away from that. <laughs> okay, uh, Kiwanuka, it seems we will, we will hang on a bit. We want to take a short break, but uh, we have Professor Peter Kagwanja uh, who wanted to just also chime in a bit before we take a short break. Yes, first we must understand how regional organizations, I mean the East African community, IGAD and the African Union work. I say so because I, I was part, I've been part and parcel All right. of yeah. drafting the can I Can I just release Kiwanuka yeah, so that we, uh, so we don't keep him hanging on? Please. Uh, Kiwanuka, you wanted just to give your closing remarks on this. Uh, questions are being raised about uh, how substantial this case is. Uh, regarding, but this is an, is a nominee. Uh, he is not really an appointive, uh, 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 of course, position as it is right now. He's not been appointed. It's just a, a suggestion, a nominee. And then uh, the the other question is, you'd raise, and there are very many, uh, very good German issues that you put on the uh, forward as well that we cannot get another appointment if still he's not exhausted his five-year five term as stipulated by the treaty for establishment of the East African Community. But uh, uh, we see he has not even tendered his resignation as yet. And the question that is looming is how providential is this appointment when there is a cloud bank of uh, corruption and allegations of corruption, I should say. I think uh, the word allegation, allegation is very key in this particular uh, point. Maybe you close the remarks in, 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 the, in light of what I've just uh, raised as well. But the people of East Africa, to care for the treaty, in this matter of Masuk, read uh, Article 67, specifically 1 and 4. That you cannot nominate a person when the other one is still serving. And that's the point the host is saying. The man has not resigned. The man is not dead. <laughs> then you cannot claim that I'm, 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 I'm nominating another one. That, that, that's the problem. But of course, we, shall pick, we should pick from this so that in future, when the, we see the community breaking the laws, when we see these partnerships breaking the law, so that we can come up as many as possible to challenge this. Because the moment they know that these things will be challenged, they will, of course, start to comply with the law. Otherwise, I think uh, it, has, it has been a good uh, interaction. See you next time. Thank you. Okay, okay. For a moment, let me just, uh, can I just see off my guest? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I should. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you want him to ask questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants to go, maybe. Uh -huh. These things will definitely, there's a process, and they're going to take effect on the basis of the process. But the appointment, uh, for example, I could be a member of parliament, and I'm appointed as a minister tomorrow. It doesn't say that Wafara had not resigned from parliament, so how can you appoint him as a minister? You see, then what do I have? This is different. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Hang, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. The only thing is that I can't hold those positions together both. I will still have to, there's a process to be followed, the process has to go. There has to be a, uh, uh, um, something that goes to the speaker, and, and, and I have to resign my position as a, as, as a member of parliament after the appointment. And, and then the, the speaker has got to issue the writ. Mm -hmm. And once that writ is issued, is when somebody else now can run for that seat. Maduki's is not appointment. But, but, right. but Maduki. Maduki it's not appointment. But what was he? It is basically a contract, it's a work contract. All but, right. But do you know our cabinet ministers are on a contract right now? Are you okay. aware of that? All right. <laughs> the castes and the cabinet it. ministers are on a contract. I, are... I think there's too much ado about something. We, be, we, 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 we need just to wait a little longer and, and see how these things unfold. All right. And, and maybe uh, without passing any judgment, some of these things. Mm -hmm. Now that I've processed, initially I wasn't quite sure, but now that I'm listening to the lawyer, I, I think uh, there might be just too much ado about nothing. Maduko right. has a perfect right to choose any job over any other job. And, and our president has a perfect right also to send a nominee's name. 
say that in the absence of this guy whom I've appointed to another place, I would want this. Listen, you remember how uh, the current... No, no. The current That's okay. Can I, can I take a short break uh, for Amali? Because I know... Yes, oh. yes. You've started waxing really lyrical on this as well. So <laughs> let's just hear from the other side and of course give our other panelists the time as well to respond. Uh, the providential issue or the question that uh, is now probing is why now this appointment when there is this looming impeachment that was coming because according to other pundits is that uh, dr D dr peter Malou J just a moment just a moment because it's coming you the east african legislative assembly wanted or is in the process of impeaching uh peter maduki because of uh what they say malfeasance and uh, the five the six million dollars uh, uh question uh that uh, is on the table all right. So far, you seem to be interrupting with my thoughts, so I, I need to sign off. All right, let me take a short break. When we circle back, of course, we shall continue with the, uh, with the program right now. Kiwanuka, thank you very much for your valid company. I really appreciate your sentiment this morning. We shall be keeping and doggedly following this particular uh, petition with you to just to update us. Thank you for joining in this morning on KTN News. KTN News. Get the whole story. Panda to Kupandishi on your entertainment.